Hey scholars, it's good to be back with you. Today I'd like to talk to you about wood finishes. Now if you've ever built something out of wood, like furniture or a musical instrument or something, you've had the choice of what to finish it with, what protective covering to put on it. There's a lot of choices. I went to the home store near us last night and this is what I found. Oh my! How am I supposed to pick between all this stuff? Does one thing work better than others? Is there a a particular finish for each application? How am I supposed to make sense of this? I can help. Let's talk about wood finishes. Well, it would help if we had some wood. Here. This is a piece of pine I keep in my office. It's got some magnets on the back of it. I use it for demos and stuff. That's why there's a number on it. There's the other two are down here. Okay, this doesn't have any finish on it. It's just bare wood, and it's fine. It's been here for years and years. It's, it's turned a little brown. It used to be a lighter color. But it's fine. It doesn't have any finish on it. Why do you finish wood? Well, most wood doesn't lead a life like this. Most of the things we make out of wood get handled, so dirt and oil off our hands get on them. Um, they get banged around a little bit. If it's a furniture, stuff gets set on it. Look at your, your uh, dining room table where you eat dinner. How much food and milk and water and whatever gets spilled all over that table? Well, if the wood didn't have any finish on it, all that stuff would soak in and it would degrade the wood. So we put a finish on to help make it look better, but mostly to protect wood. So here's a specific example from the musical instrument world. Now, I'm a guitar maker, among other things. And this is a, just an inexpensive guitar I bought from Fender. This is a Fender uh, CF140S. Love this guitar. If you're looking for a good, cheap guitar, check out Fender's. But anyway. It's got this nice shiny finish on it. Well, what is this stuff? Well, it's a, it's a, this stuff is called catalyzed polyester. It's a hard plastic. And what it does is it makes the guitar shiny, which makes it attractive. But it also protects it. This stuff is like armor plating for wood. It, this is about the toughest finish you can put on a, on a musical instrument and still have it work. So, and also you notice it's shiny here on the, on the body of it. But the neck, it's not shiny, it's more of a satin finish. And that's because when you slide your finger, your hand up and down the neck, you don't want that super shiny uh, feel. It makes your hands stick to it. So this has got a satin finish on the neck. Works like a champ. Well, why did they pick polyester? Hmm, what is polyester? How does it fit in? Let's figure this out. Now, if you're going to figure out a way to organize finishes, there's basically two, uh, one decision you have to pick. Is there chemistry? Is there not chemistry? So let's, let's do that first. Chemistry. No or yes. What do we mean by chemistry? Well, a lot of finishes dry through some kind of chemical reaction like oil finishes or polyurethanes and things dry by oxidation. They actually absorb oxygen from the, from the air around them. And there's a chemical reaction that I'm not really qualified to try to explain that makes the finish harden. So when the finish hardens, it's not chemically the same as what originally came out of the can. So that's a yes. The polyester on that guitar over there, it has a catalyzer in it and it dries like an epoxy. In fact, some people do use epoxy on, on musical instruments. So yes, what finishes don't have chemistry? Well, there's really only two. One is called shellac, and one is called lacquer. Now, I have to apologize for the noise right outside my window. There's a construction project out there, and there's a fine young man out there with a chainsaw. He's being very uh, uh, thoughtful. He waits till I start talking to turn the chainsaw on, and as soon as I hit stop on the camera, he stops the chainsaw. His timing is just perfect, so I apologize. He's doing exactly what he should be doing out there. So sh shellac and lacquer, what are those? Well, shellac is a bug byproduct. There's actually a thing called a lac bug, and it makes this secretion or excretion or whatever it is. And people go out and collect this. There are people in the world who go out and scrape lac nodules off trees. And that's, that lac, once you filter all the uh, uh, rocks and bark and stuff out of it, um, is dissolved in alcohol, and that's shellac. Shellac's nice. It's non-toxic uh, when processed correctly. Don't go drinking shellac out of the hardware store. Um, in fact, pills that are shiny sometimes have shellac on them, or at least they used to. 
Um, it's a thermoplastic, so when you heat it up, it softens. It was our first thermoplastic, really. Records used to be made out of it. Um, the nice part about it is the shellac dissolves in alcohol. You paint that liquid onto your instrument or your fur furniture or whatever, and when the alcohol evaporates, you're left with shellac. It's the same stuff that came out of the can, just without the solvent. There's no chemistry. Same thing with lacquer. Lacquer, at least the classical version of it, is made out of a, a chemical called nitrocellulose. Now, that's also gun cotton. Gun cotton is an explosive. Lacquer is just viciously flammable. But that, that uh, lacquer solids, the nitrocellulose, is dissolved in this just witch's brew of toxic solvents. It's lacquer thinner. You spray it on, paint it on, whatever. The solvents evaporate. And what you got left is nitrocellulose, the same thing that was in the can before they put the uh, solvents in it. The nice part about these is that it's easy to refinish them. If there's a scratch or a dent or something, you can paint a new coat on or spray a new coat, and the solvent in that new coat dissolves whatever was underneath it and just melts in. So you get this nice unified uh, finish. Shellac is mostly used as a uh, sealer now, and there's a couple kinds out there. Um, shellac has a, a natural wax in it, and I'm pretty careful to use de-waxed shellac just to make sure that there's that wax doesn't uh, cause a problem. The nice thing about shellac, the rule of thumb is that anything that'll stick to wood will stick to shellac. There's even a de-waxed shellac sold by Zinzer, who I think might be owned by Rust-Oleum now, and it's sold as a universal sealer, and it really is. Um, pretty much anything will stick to shellac. So when I make instruments, I always seal the wood with shellac because it doesn't matter what I try to put over it, it'll stick. Um, lacquer will stick to shellac as well nicely. So there's what happens when there's no chemistry. What happens when there is chemistry? Well, get down here, there's a couple of things. There's, I'll call these oils, and I'll just call this over here plastic. Now, there's, there's a, lot, a lot going on here. These are pretty rough uh, uh, categories, but it'll work. Okay, so when I say oils, it's not a petroleum oil usually. Usually it's some kind of uh, natural oil, and sometimes they call these drying oils. The oils typically come from a seed or a nut or something like that. So if you go to the hardware store and you see something called tongue oil, T-U-N-G, it's not this kind of tongue. There's actually a nut called a tongue nut, T-U-N-G, and the oil out of that can be used as a finish an oil finish. There's something called Danish oil, and it's just a mixture of oils. Uh, when we make guitars in the project I'm on, we use a product called True Oil a lot. Well, True Oil was designed for uh, gun stocks, wood gun stocks to protect them. And it's a mixture of some uh, drying oils, and it, it works pretty well. So these are oils, and these dry by oxidation. When you look at varnishes, varnishes are kind of oil. Varnish, traditionally, is some kind of, of drying oil, like linseed oil or something like that. And it's got some resins from trees, tree sap, really, mixed into it. And so there's all kinds of varnishes out there that uh, fall under this category as well. Hey, if you're an artist, oil paint, originally anyway, was made with linseed oil. Oil paint is just linseed oil with, some, with a, a tint in it, a powder that has a specific color in it. So in the old, old days, if you made paint, you started with linseed oil and you mixed this stuff in it to give it a color. That's one of the reasons that oil paint takes so long to dry. Now, natural oils can take days and days to dry, they can, but they can be polymerized. They're, they're heated up in the production process, and polymerized oils dry faster. In the extreme, they, the modern versions of this also have heavy metal dryers in them. They have cobalt salts and some other stuff in them that again, for chemistry reason, makes it dry faster. Okay? So when you're looking at, at linseed oil, tongue oil, Danish oil, true oil, varnish, it's this kind of thing. So let's get over here. Now there's plastic. And plastic dries just by chemistry. So just a reminder, this thing right here, this is finished with plastic and nothing but. Um, the one you see a lot still in factories is called catalyzed polyester. If you've ever done work with fiberglass, you know, you put the fabric down and you mix up that nasty smelling plastic and you squeegee it in, that plastic is polyester. And there are many, many kinds of this. The, the catalyzed polyester is just one of many. 
And so typically what you'll do is you'll take some chemical, some man-made uh, chemical, petrochemical probably, and you put a solvent in it and it starts to cure and you have to spray it or apply it before it cures. Once it's cured, it's as hard as it's ever going to get. The nice part about this is there's also a uh, subset of uh, plastics that have a UV cure. You can expose them to ultraviolet light and that photochemical reaction cures them. Uh, Taylor Guitars in California has a really nice setup where they've used UV cure polyester and it's sprayed by an industrial robot. So it's very, very precise, it's very clean, there's very little overspray. Uh, not a green process certainly, but they're, they're treading pretty lightly on the environment in using this. When the guitar is finished, you know, sp has the finish sprayed on by the robot, they put it in a, uh, an oven or a light box that has ultraviolet lights in it. It sits in there for less than two minutes and when it comes out it's as cured as it's ever going to be. So if you, in an industrial environment, this is probably where you want to be. Now for my guitar making friends out here, it's going to be this, this, and this. You're probably going to stay away from that. All right, there's one last kind of finish you need to know about. And I got to tell you, I'm not completely sure where it fits in here. It's probably about there if you really want to know. And we'll call it, we even put in a green color here. This is called water poly. And it's, that's not really what it is, but that's what everybody calls it. And it's a polyurethane that's supposedly water-based. Well, it's not really water-based, although it does have water in it. It's got something called ethylene glycol in it, which is chemically a little closer related to like antifreeze than water. But the point is it's not oil and it's not one of these, these plastics that has all the, all the volatile organic compounds in it. And the water poly is nice because it cleans up with water and it's VOCs, the volatile organic compounds, which is the stuff that gets in the air and is really bad for you, is pretty close to zero. Now, I wouldn't drink it, you know, it's not that safe, but it's a much safer than, than these are. There, it's, it's a lot less bad for you. And you can uh, put this on either by spraying or by uh, just with a brush. I use a rag, a cotton rag. It comes in spray cans as well. And it's usually got a blue label. So if you look in the home store or the hardware store, you'll see cans that look like this. In fact, I use a version made, uh, the, the brand name is called Color Tone, and it's sold by Stuart McDonald, the guitar shop supply people. It's formulated so it dries a little harder, and it just comes in a little pint bottle, and I rub it on with a, a piece of cotton rag an old, that I cut from an old t-shirt, you know, no, no lint or anything on it. Works like a champ. Dries fast, there's no smell, there's no cleanup or anything. So at home, when I make guitars, my finish kit consists of a jar of this, I actually buy de-waxed shellac flakes because they last forever. I dissolve them in ethanol that I get. You can, a lot of uh, guitar makers use Everclear from the local booze store. Since I'm at a university, we have a chemistry supply window, so I get ethanol from there. So I just mix that up. You just throw the shellac flakes in a little, little, little jar and throw some alcohol in it and it dissolves. So this is what I use to seal the wood. And to finish, I use this stuff. And so my finish kit consists of a little jar of this and a little bottle of that and a couple of rags, and I am good to go. So this is another one. Um, I think people are going to start using more of the water poly as time goes on, but we'll have to wait and see. Last thing for guitar makers out there is whichever ones you pick, different formulations have different uh, hardnesses. And so fin some finishes will have will never really dry to a super hard finish. And when that happens, it's easy to scratch them and it's easy to dent them. For uh, use on musical instruments, or at least guitars, you probably want something that dries pretty hard. And when you're looking at these, one of the things you can do is pick finishes that are made for floors. In fact, I'm on a project called the STEM Guitar Project. Check it out at guitarbuilding.org. And in a lot of our workshops, we use a, a product called Bona, B-O-N-A, and it's a water-based polyester formulated for floors. So it's safe, no, no, no fumes or anything, it's easy to apply, um, and it dries really hard. So it, it's easy to sand down and it's easy to polish. So this is the big uh, picture here. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.